Hey! Welcome to my channel. Today we have a brief retelling of the 1998 dramatic film, The Truman Show, on the program. Be careful, spoilers ahead. The film tells the seemingly unremarkable story of an ordinary American, a representative of the middle-class Truman Burbank. We see his usual working morning. He is going to work, talking nicely with the neighbors. Suddenly, a lamp falls from the sky. They say on the radio that this is a part of the plane, it began to crumble into pieces right above the area where Truman lives. Here's a news flash just then. An aircraft in trouble began shedding parts as it flew over Sea Haven just a few moments ago. The area is a well-maintained and lively island inhabited by friendly people. The protagonist arrives at the office, where he works as an insurance agent. Here we learn that Truman dreams of traveling to Fiji. The boss sends him to a meeting, for which it is necessary to cross the strait. But when Truman arrives at the boathouse, he sees a sunken boat. He suddenly has a panic attack and runs away. A little later, it turns out that this is Truman's childhood psychological trauma, his father drowned when they went out on a boat together in a storm. Then we are shown the ordinary life of the protagonist. He mows the lawn at the house and communicates with his wife Meryl. Then Truman plays golf with his friend Marlon and talks to him about Fiji. While Truman is sitting on the beach, it starts to rain, but at first it looks strange as if it is being watered from a large shower. Drenched, he returns home and tries to convince his wife to take a trip to Fiji. She convinces him to be serious, remember about financial obligations and plans to have a baby. Another work morning. Unexpectedly, Truman recognizes his father in the street beggar. Suddenly, this beggar is grabbed and dragged away, and the road is blocked by runners, for some reason equipped with walkie-talkies. Truman runs to tell his mother about this, but she convinces him that it was all hallucinations, and she also often sees her father. Truman goes down to the basement, where he secretly keeps his college sweetheart's sweater in a chest. Once, in his student years, he noticed a pretty girl Lauren, but she disappeared almost immediately. But Meryl began to be imposed on him as a companion. While preparing for an exam in the library, Truman met Lauren again, but she behaved strangely, and suddenly offered to run away from the library. On the beach, in a romantic setting, she tried to tell Truman that everything around was not real, and her name was actually Sylvia, not Lauren. Their conversation is interrupted by a man in a car who introduces himself as Lauren's father. He convinces Truman that the girl has schizophrenia. He takes the girl by force with him, and her sweater, which Truman has kept all these years, remains on the beach. On another work morning, Truman sees a headline explaining the kidnapping of a beggar who looks like his father. It turns out that in order to maintain the appearance of the area, the beggars are removed from the streets. Suddenly, an unknown wave is switched on on the radio in Truman's car, on which all his actions are discussed in detail. Okay, he's making his turn on the Lancaster Square. Something's wrong. Uh, change frequencies. Then the usual radio program turns on, the announcer explains that there was a technical problem, and the listeners got access to the police service wave. But Truman already had suspicions. He intentionally risky crosses the road, but cars and buses do not harm him. He runs into an office building near work, tries to enter the elevator, however, the elevator doors do not lead to a booth, but to some room hidden by plywood sheets. Building security takes Truman out. He runs to Marlon and talks about his suspicions. It seems to Truman that he is being watched, or maybe they are preparing for something. His friend ridicules such ideas and Truman returns to the theme of traveling to Fiji. In the evening, he looks at a photo album with his wife and mother. Truman notices a photograph from childhood, near the famous Mount Rushmore, where portraits of U.S. presidents are carved. The mountain turns out to be very small, and Truman does not remember the trip itself. Mom, following Merrill, says that it's time for Truman to seriously think about procreation. When Merrill volunteers to drive her mother-in-law home, Truman watches the show on TV. The announcer praises the benefits of being at home. Truman continues to doubt. He looks over the photos from the wedding and notices that Merrill has her fingers crossed. The next morning, his wife informs him that the building where the strange elevator was located has collapsed. Truman secretly follows her on her way to work at the hospital. Despite the hospital staff trying to stop him, he makes his way to the operating room. From there, a guard takes him out, but Truman manages to notice that the operated woman was not under anesthesia. The main character comes to a travel agency. There, he notices new posters warning about the dangers of traveling. Despite this, he wants to buy a ticket to Fiji. The manager replies that this is not possible in the next month. 
Truman buys a bus ticket to Chicago. He is recognized by a girl on the bus, and other passengers behave unnaturally. As a result, the driver announces the breakdown of the bus. Truman notices that people in the city are moving in circles, he tries to tell Merrill about this, but she turns the conversation to other topics. Then he decides to spontaneously leave at least in some direction, but the exit is blocked by cars. He chooses another direction, but it is the road that runs along the bridge over the water. Truman cannot cross the bridge alone due to rabies, then he closes his eyes and presses on the gas. Merrill is forced to grab the steering wheel to keep the car from sinking, and they cross the bridge. On the way, they come across a clearly staged fire on the road, and then the rescuers block the road. They say that they are eliminating the consequences of an accident at a nuclear power plant. But when the policeman suddenly calls Truman by name, he runs out of the car into the woods. He is caught and brought back home. During the conversation, Merrill offers to drink cocoa and inappropriately begins to praise the brand of cocoa. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new mo cocoa drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. Truman accuses Merrill that she is also part of the conspiracy around him, she grabs a kitchen knife, then Truman begins to choke her. Merrill yells at someone unseen to stop this. When Marlon arrives, Merrill rushes to him, but again turns to someone invisible, saying that this is all unprofessional. Marlon and Truman go to drink beer, Truman says that it seems to him that the whole world around him revolves around him, but, according to Marlon, all people have ever imagined themselves as the heroes of a TV show. Marlon reminds Truman of their long friendship, and says that if everything around is a play, then they are not real friends. Marlon explains his sudden arrival at Truman's house, with important news. Marlon managed to find Truman's father, who emerges from the fog. They embrace Truman. After an evening quarrel, Merrill offended by Truman and leaves him. At work, Truman has a new pretty employee, but he does not show interest in the events taking place around him. Truman finally understood what the audience knew from the very beginning. Truman Burbank is the protagonist of a reality show called The Truman Show that has been running for 30 years. Truman's whole life is under the gun of hidden cameras. When the idea first came up, the show's creators selected a number of pregnant women who were going to give up their children after giving birth. Truman was chosen for the show because the time of his birth was closest to the start of the project. Since then, his whole life has been a production in which a large number of actors are involved. The area of the scenery, the number of cameras that watch his life, constantly increased. To create a believable city, the largest film set in the world was created, which is even visible from the moon. It has 5,000 hidden cameras. The show has gained immense popularity in the world, it is watched in many countries and all social strata. Since it runs around the clock, there are no commercial breaks. So the actors have to advertise knives, mowers and cocoa under the guise of casual conversation. The show's immediate goal was to show the conception and birth of Truman's child. That is why the topic of children was constantly raised by a pseudo-wife and pseudo-mother. When the pseudo-wife lost their nerve, they decided to urgently bring Truman to a new girlfriend. However, as the show progressed, problems arose with the actors, who felt that they received little attention in this production. The actor who played Truman's father also felt left out. And when he was removed from the show, he made constant attempts to return there, illegally entering the set. However, when he did manage to meet with Truman, he had to be returned. The organizers of the show consider the appearance of the pseudo-father to be the point at which Truman had doubts about the reality of what is happening. And so they hoped that the same actor would help calm Truman. Sylvia, who plays Lauren, really developed feelings for Truman. At a minimum, she considers it inhuman to turn his life into a farce. After being fired from the show, she continues to empathize with Truman. Sylvia has launched a campaign for the release of Truman, but has no success. After Truman, as if jokingly, addressed the show stewards, standing in front of the mirror, they are watching him even more closely. But he manages to fool them. He records the sound of snoring, puts a doll under the blanket, and quietly leaves the basement through an underground hole. All the actors of the show are thrown in search of Truman, but he is nowhere to be found. And then the executive producer of the show, Christoph, realizes that the search is only on the ground. Everyone is used to the fact that Truman has hydrophobia, which he was specially instilled with, because he dreamed of traveling all his life. Cameras are aimed at the water, and they see that Truman is driving a yacht. He is happy. In his hands is a photograph of Sylvia. Sylvia sees this and is visibly moved. None of the actors on the show know how to steer a ship. 
Then the stewards decide to arrange a controlled storm, because water is also part of the props of the show. That's just the excitement of the water, does not frighten Truman. And then the strength of the storm is increased so much that Truman loses control, the yacht capsizes, and he begins to sink. Truman screams into invisible cameras that they can kill him, but he will not give up his own. He loses strength and begins to go underwater. The show's producer is not prepared to kill Truman, so the artificial storm is stopped. Truman manages to swim out, and again put the yacht on the move. He is happy and moving on. Suddenly, the yacht comes up against the scenery, which limits the world of the show. Truman walks along the decorative wall and finds stairs. The steps lead to the exit from the TV studio, the door. Then the executive producer turns to him. Christoph speaks to Truman on speakerphone. He delivers a heartfelt speech about how the real world is cruel. Deception both in the show and in the real world, only in the show Truman is not in danger. But that doesn't stop Truman. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. He deliberately feigned farewell to the viewers and just walks out the door. The show is stopped, the viewers rejoice, and most of all, Sylvia. She runs out of the apartment in the hope of meeting Truman as soon as possible. Other viewers are discussing what show to watch next. Like the video? Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.